Talk to me. Talk to me. Hello and welcome. I'm Dan Gersten, host of Chatting with History, where you can listen into conversations I have with some of the most famous characters in the history of Western civilization. And today's guest is no exception. In fact, we're devoting the entire show to him. It's Christopher Columbus, whose sailing for Spain is credited with discovering the Western Hemisphere, and in so doing, altered the course of human history on a global scale. So without further delay, let's meet Christopher Columbus. Senor Columbus, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dan. And uh, please uh, call me Chris. With the exception of those who call me Don, most of my friends call me Chris, except uh, Queen Isabella. She was always so formal and just loved the way that Christopher sounded when she said it. Personally, it made me cringe, like squeaky chalk on a blackboard. Do they still have blackboards? Uh, not sure, Chris. Uh, uh, Chris. So, Chris it is. Uh, still, why do some call you Don? Out of respect, of course. It's more of a title than a name. One that's been accorded my family since well for a long time. And why don't we leave it at that? Capiche? Well, uh, sure. So, why don't we begin by learning about you as a child? I mean, not many people know of you prior to 1492 when you sailed the ocean blue. Well, I was born in 1451 in Genoa, Italy, though some say it was in 1436, but what do they know? And my father, Domenico Colombo, was a wool weaver, and he also had the cheese stand that I helped out with. I was one of four sons and had a sister, too. And while the family wasn't what you consider rich, I was afforded a good education, though I'm mostly uh, self-taught. Uh, yes, um, I've heard that you're quite the linguist. Well, in addition to my native tongue, I learned uh, Latin, uh, Portuguese, and Castilian, all of which helped me study astronomy, navigation, geography, and history, including the travels of Marco Polo, who, among other things, invented a popular hide-and-seek game usually played in a swimming pool. So, when did you become fascinated with the sea? Uh, some reports say that I first went to sea when I was 10, and others say when I was 14. You don't know? Well, it was a long time ago. I do remember serving on various ships in various roles. And when I was 23, I made my first long voyage sailing to an island in the Aegean Sea. So, as a child of a wool weaver, a cheese vendor, and I've heard a barkeep, uh, why go to sea? Well, a couple of things. At first, I grew up in the major seaport, and seafaring men were everywhere, talking about adventure and the wondrous things they had seen. I mean, plus it seemed like they did pretty well with the ladies, if you catch my drift. And then there was this little uh, misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Mm. Yeah, you see, my father, Domenico, who many knew as Dom Colombo, had a twin brother named Don Colombo. And while Dad would weed the wool and stuff, his brother was involved in things that, well, let's just say you didn't want to get Uncle Don's a bad side. You know what I mean? Don Colombo. Okay, I, um, I believe I'm starting to get the picture. Good. So one day, Uncle Don, he actually liked being called the Don, came up to me and asked me to do him a favor. And being my uncle and the Don, how could I refuse? Seems that the uncle was feeling disrespected by one of the local politicians and wanted me to kind of uh, explain the things to him. Yeah, that was it, explain things to him. Anyways, one thing led to another, and next thing that I knew, Unc said I had to get out of town and that there was a ship leaving that afternoon. Wow, sounds like what Michael Corleone had to do in The Godfather. The Godfather? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. Uh, I, I meant no disrespect. All right, then. All right. I'll let it slide uh, this time. So you, you took up the life of a sailor? Yes, and it was uh, quite adventurous. I crewed on ships that sailed in both the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean to places that included both the northern and western coast of Africa, uh, the Canaries and the Madeira Islands, as well as England, Ireland, and Iceland. Wow. I mean, that does sound adventurous. Yes. And in 1476, a fleet of Genoese ships that I was on was attacked by French privateers about six miles off the southwestern tip of Portugal. My ship sank, and I had to swim and cling to wreckage to reach the shore. Well, obviously you survived. Of course. It's tough to kill a Colombo. 
Still, there were rumors that those Frenchies were after me, so after recovering my strength, I decided to lay low in Lisbon for a while. I went on some journeys and worked with my brother Bartholomew, whom some called about the bookie, because he was a cartographer, draftsman, and a bookmaker. I mean, a book corrector. Uh, several years after that, I married Felipe, who came from nobility, and a couple of years after that, our son Diego was born. Uh, soon afterwards, I, Felipe met how shall we say, an untimely death. Um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, it, it happens, you know, what you gonna do? Looking her back, it gave me the freedom I needed to get back to the sea. Besides, there were times when she had uh, trouble accepting the family's business. And again, uh, that was? Hey, hey, you're a wise guy or something. Well, okay. Um, so, so where did the desire to find a faster way to Asia come from? Europeans had been uh, safely traveling to Asia by land for a longer time, bringing back uh, valuable goods such as silk, spices, and drugs, and opiates. Uh, in fact, the Don, uh, Uncle Don, was involved in the import and export of business. But when Constantinople fell to the Turks in 1453, that route wasn't as easy or as safe as it had been, and that led many countries and Uncle Don to seek a sea route. So there were a number of countries interested in finding a sea route. You betcha. Foremost among them was Portugal, which believed you needed to sail around Africa to reach Asia. But you didn't think that was the best route, did you? Eh. Based on maps I had seen, knowledge of the Canaries current, and tales I had heard, the fastest way to Asia in the east was by sailing west across the Atlantic. Any fool could have told you that. So, what did you do? Well, I mean, selling ships don't grow on trees. I needed funding. Of course, I could have got a funded by Uncle Don, but he preferred to work behind the scenes. So, in 1485, I approached John II, King of Portugal, with the proposal that he equip uh, three ships and give me a year to sail out into the Atlantic. And what happened? John passed it down to his experts. Experts. <laughs> more like political lackeys, and they rejected the idea, saying my estimate of the distance was far too short. Then what? Felt they needed to expand the list of possible benefactors and move to Spania. The Rob Diego off at the monastery and headed off to Sevilla, where Uncle Don had some business interest. From there, I re-approached King John, presented my proposal to Genoa and Venice, and even had my brother Bart sound out Henry VII of England. And of course, I approached Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella and the first of Castilla, who ruled over much of Spain. Well, I mean, we are taught that you sailed for Spain. Yes, but it took a while. I mean, initially they rejected my scheme for the same reason Portugal did, that the distance I was estimating was far too short. Even so, they didn't want me going anywhere, and so they gave me an allowance and all my food, and lodging was on the house, the royal house. Mm -hmm. Not bad in all expenses paid vacation in Spain. Yeah, it's kind of like getting a free uh, room in buffet in Vegas for a year. Yeah, but you felt you had just won the jackpot. Not really. I was pretty depressed and feeling like I never got to prove that the way to Asia was by sailing west. Fortunately, during this time, I met Beatrice, a young uh, peasant woman and exotic dancer. Yeah, and she lifted my spirits and some other things, if you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, together we had a son. We named him Fernando to get on the king's good side and maybe make him think he was the father. Hmm. Um, okay. Uh, then what? Well, I went back to Ferdinand and Isabella in 1491, and this time they were more receptive. Plus, I was able to provide half the financing, which came largely from some unnamed Italian investors, if you know who I mean. And the deal... Hey, such a deal. If I was successful, I'd get the rank of Admiral of the Ocean Sea and be appointed Viceroy and Governor of all the new lands. I had the right to nominate three persons from whom the sovereigns would choose one for any office in the new lands. Plus, I'd also have the option of buying one-eighth interest in any commercial venture with the new lands and receive one-eighth of the profits. That is some deal. I mean, how'd you wrangle that? Uncle Don can be quite persuasive especially when you have financed the venture. Guess it was not one of those favors one shouldn't refuse. So now you have the financing and the backing of the Spanish monarchy, uh, then what? We had uh, three ships provisioned, and with a crew of about 90, the Santa Maria, my flagship, and the two caravels, the Nina and the Pinta, sailed from Spania to the Canaries on August 3rd, 1492. And on September 6th, we left the Canaries and then sailed on to the unknown. 
And how was that? Well, there wasn't any Caribbean cruise, that's for sure. The quarters, they were cramped, the crews slept wherever they could. They lashed themselves down so they wouldn't be swept overboard. And I don't know how familiar you are with sailors, but they complain a lot. It was like having a lot of whining of boys all asking me, uh, are we there yet? Uh, I mean, did it ever get to be a situation where the crew could have mutinied? No, 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 there was none of that. But besides, Uncle Don had been a couple of his boys on board of each ship, you know, like uh, morale officers. Yeah, that's what they were, morale officers. And, and then? Just at the midnight on the morning of October 12, 1492, 36 days after we sailed from the Canaries, a lookout on the Pinta sighted land. And later that day, we landed, we planted banners in the Royal Standard and claimed the land for Spagna. You know, some people say that the lookout on the Pinta was to get a reward for sighting land and that you kept it instead. Hey, you show me disrespect again. Well, sorry. You know, I, I, I didn't mean to. Um, so, so you've now set foot on this new land. Uh, where was it? Down if I know, somewhere in what is now referred to as the Bahamas. Could have been some Anake or Planakes or San Salvador, an island that was named that in 1925, thinking it might be the island I landed on and had named San Salvador. <laughs> Our original. So you don't know? Hey! Sorry. Uh, what about the natives? I mean, the island was inhabited, no? Yeah, it was. Uh, shortly after we landed, they came out of the hiding and greeted us. Seemed friendly enough. And I felt they'd make good servants because they were quick to repeat whatever we said to them. Plus, it didn't appear that they had any religion and could easily be made Christians. So, what next? Well, there were still discoveries to be made. In two weeks after landing on San Salvador, I explored the northeast coast of Cuba and Hispaniola, you know, the island of the Dominican Republic and the Haiti on. On Christmas morning, the Santa Maria ran aground and I had to abandon it. Some Christmas gift. Hmm? But anyways, this led to establishing the settlement of La Navidad, where 39 of the crew members stayed behind while I sailed off on the Nina, heading back to Spania, which I reached on March 15th of 1493. And how was the welcome? Oh, it was super. Plus, I had the stage all to myself. As a captain of the uh, Pinta, my rival for the attention of the monarchy was found swimming with the fishes shortly after he reached Spania. Anyways, at the Royal Palace in Barcelona, I ate at the same table as Ferdi and Izzy and regaled them with tales of discovery and the riches I had found, accompanied by a parade of exotic islanders, colorful parrots and gold. Plus, I received all the titles and rewards I was entitled to and easily convinced the king and the queen to commission a second voyage. So there was more than one voyage? Yes, there was four of them. Well, I know that I'd like to hear about the other trips, but before we do, a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Chatting with History. One day these rats were playing in the woods. One of some matches and that's no good. Listen to smoke before you give it a try. Only you. Don't play with matches. Don't play with pie. can prevent wildfires. Fire! This is the hand that sows the seed, that grows the forest, that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that gives to Earthshare, that supports the hand, Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups together. Support Earthshare, support them all. To learn more, please visit our website. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. I like Coast Gas because it's fun. 
I like Cub Scouts because I like all the fun activities. And、um, play with other people. And we get to help others and earn medals. Race car things and. I li- Can I start? Because we get to go on TV. We get to go on a lot of trips, and we got to do a lot of fun activities and have a lot of fun. And once we even got to go on a two-day camping trip. That's it. <laughs> We are Hot One Sixty Hot Drivers, and we are. We do our best to help other people. Hello, and welcome back to Chatting with History. We have been chatting with Christopher Columbus, who, sailing for Spain, sought to find a way to Asia by sailing westward, and in so doing, discovered the Western Hemisphere, altering the course of human history. So far, we followed his tale from the time he was a lad right up to the completion of his first voyage, and now it seems he's ready to start on a second one. So let's get back. To our chat, Christopher Columbus, you've just completed your first voyage to the New World. Convinced the king and queen of Spain to commission another trip. Where are you going? Well, then I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, so tell us about the second trip. Well, it was sort of different from the first. To begin with, we now knew the way, and I was able to go on map quests for directions. Plus,、uh, this time around, there were seventeen ships carrying about twelve hundred men who were going to colonize the region, and among them were priests who couldn't wait to get their hands on the natives.、Uh, well, convert them to Christianity, that is.、Uh, forgive my asking, did Uncle Don have a role in this voyage? Ah,、uh, come now, of course he did. Let's just say he had an interest in the lands I discovered and those I was about to discover. And to help me expand the family business, my brothers Bart and Diego came along. Thanks. I, I just had to ask. And and how was this trip? Pretty smooth sailing. We left the Canaries on October thirteenth, fourteen ninety three, and on the second of November, or was it the third? I forget. I don't know. We sighted land, a group of smaller islands now known as the Lesser Antilles. We then sailed northwestward and discovered Guadeloupe and Puerto Rico, heading toward La Navidad. Yeah, I bet those men you left behind were thrilled to see you. Well, they would have been had any of them still been alive. What do you mean? When we got there, the place was in ruins, and it looked like a massacre had taken place. After some searching, we found a mass grave with the bodies of around eleven of the thirty-nine men we had left. The natives?、Uh, probably, but their village had been burned and destroyed too. So who really knows what happened?、Oh. Uh, then what? We found a new settlement a short distance away that I named Isabella to keep old Queenie happy. And how did that go? Yeah, not that too well. Some of the supposed colonists were ill, and others,、uh, who knows? Anywho, a lot of them didn't want to work in, to make the settlement successful. So what did you do? Well, that's what I do. I started enslaving the natives, forcing them to work on the settlement. It was the only way to keep the colonists from becoming too restive. Even with some of Uncle Don's、uh, moral officers. Then what? Well, I left my brother Diego in charge of the settlement, and I set out to do what I do best: explore. After all, I was still convinced that what I had found was the entrance to Asia, hoping that Hispaniola was Japan and that Cuba was part of China. And what did you find? On the way to La Navidad, I found and named Montserrat, Antigua, Nevis, Saint Kitts. Saba, Saint Martin, and Saint Croix, and after leaving Isabella in 1494, I explored more of Cuba and discovered Jamaica. That must have put a smile on your face. Yeah, but it was short-lived. When I returned to Isabella, it was chaos. I mean, settlers were raiding local villages, and not finding riches, became disgruntled and headed back to Spain. Plus, they didn't like that Diego was Italian and not Spanish, 
and didn't like the way he was running the place. Why they even sent the letters back to the officials in Spania complaining about the conditions and the leadership which led to a Spanish official arriving in 1495 to investigate me, me of all people. Wow. Out of say, and despite efforts by Uncle Don and our connections, in 1496, I headed back to Spania, leaving Bartlett Diego in charge of the colony. And what happened once you got back? Well, Ferdy and Izzy gave me a friendly welcome, continued to show me favor. And though I was cleared of any longer doing, I had to wait more than a year before they approved my fur voyage. Uh, tell me about that trip. Well, in May of 1498, I left Spania with a fleet of six ships. When we got close, I sent some of those ships to aid the settlement of Hispaniola while I headed back to, uh, to find the new lands. And did you? Yes, I'm credited with discovering the islands of Trinidad, Tobago, and Granada, and exploring part of the South American coast, finding the mouth of the Monaco River, which I thought was <laughs> the Garden of Eden. Um, okay. Uh then what? After several weeks, I headed to the settlement on Hispaniola, which Bartolomeu had relocated from Isabella to Santo Domingo. And when I got there, it wasn't pretty. How so? And the, well, there's a lot of water going on. I mean, many settlers upset over the lack of riches and unwilling to work on establishing the colony were rebelling. And two camps had formed, those loyal to my family and those who followed some Spanish upstart named Francisco Rodan. You know, in school, we're taught nothing of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it took me two years before I was able to restore order, even have to hang some of the rebels and promise others land and all the islanders who lived on it. Yeah, well, that calmed things, no? No, only temporarily. Conditions at the colony continued to deteriorate. And finally, in desperation, I requested that Ferdy and Izzy send a judge to deal with the situation. Well, that sounds like a positive move. Not really. This guy, Francisco Barbadilla, arrived, stripped me of my titles, seized of my house and records, and had my brothers and I arrested, replaced in chains, and returned to Spania. Who did this Barbadilla think he was? Some stinking fed like Elliot Ness? Well, you know, he was sent by the king and queen. Uh, get out of here. So, what happened after you returned to Spain? In December of 1500, I went before the royal court, and whatever items that had been taken when I was arrested were restored to me. However, I couldn't get my titles back, which was very humiliating. Even though I wasn't found guilty, as if they could ever convict a Calambo, I really wanted those titles back. So after the trial, what did you do? I hung around Spania and worked in the family import-export business. And was that satisfying? Not really. My discoveries really created a theory of exploration, and all I could do was watch. And in 1499, Vasco da Gamba, sailing for Portugal, made a successful trip around the southern tip of Africa and crossed the Indian Ocean to India. Uh, I bet that really ticked you off. Yes and no. It actually made Ferdinand and Izzy once again receptive to finding a way to reach China by sailing westward, and it helped me get a photo voyage. Okay, well, tell us about that trip. Well, it had a clear purpose, to search for gold, silver, precious stones, spices, and other riches. Plus, I was hit with a restraining order and had to stay away from Hispaniola. Well, I guess you couldn't go home anymore, huh? Yeah, something like that. Anyways, on May 9th, 1502, or was it the 11th? I don't know. A fleet of 40 ships set sail from Hispania, carrying 150 men, including me, my brother Bart, and my 13-year-old son, Fernando. After some stops, we landed on the Caribbean island of Martinique, and the provisioning the ship headed to Hispaniola. Yeah, well, you were forbidden to go there by the king and queen. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I needed to repair one of my ships, and besides, a hurricane was brewing. So what happened? I uh, sent the message to then-Governor Ovando, asking permission to enter the port and letting him know about the hurricane. And then? Then? Why, that pompous ass, not only did he not grant me haven from the storm, but he allowed a larger fleet of 30 ships to leave for Spania. What a jerk! So? so we found a small nearby harbor and rolled out the storm, suffering little damage. The larger fleet sailing to Spania lost 29 of its 30 ships, about 500 men, including my buddy Frankie de Barbadilla. <laughs> and an immense cargo of gold. It serves them right. And, <clears throat> and, and then? After the storm, we headed off and after a brief stop at Jamaica, sailed to Central America and explored what is now Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. In April of 1503, we started heading back towards Hispaniola. And how did that go? Eh, 
Anyway, I discovered what is now the Cayman Islands, which I named Las Tortugas because of the numerous sea turtles there. Also opened a couple of bank accounts. Later, though, in June, we ran into a storm off the coast of Cuba and limped into St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica, where we were stranded for a year, despite having contacted the new governor, Hispaniola, about that situation. Stranded for a year, though help was notified? Yeah, it seems a lot of political folk didn't care for me. I think they were jealous. Or maybe they viewed it as a territory now and didn't want the Colombo family muscling back in. Anyhow, it took a whole year before we were rescued, and finally I arrived back in Spania in November of 1504. And um, if I've been paying attention, that was the end of your exploration. Mm, sadly it was. So there was only, there was no way I could travel anymore. And why was that? Well, I think we need to remember that I was now 50-something, and that was pretty old, especially for a seafaring explorer like myself. And on the last trip, I was sick with rheumatism and fever, and my eyesight got really bad. In fact, I was in bed for almost the whole trip. And sadly, I lost one of my benefactors and protectors when Izzy died shortly after I returned to Spania. I sure do miss that gal. Had quite a laugh and liked to party. <laughs> Freddy was the one with the royal scepter up his, you know what, you know. So, what did you do? Well, I spent a fair amount of time recuperating at the monastery and writing books. Also sent letters to Ferdi and others seeking to have my titles restored. And were you successful? As far as getting the titles back, no. Still I was able to get resolution regarding financial claims and was granted 2% of the riches from the lands I discovered and explored, which I guess was a considerable sum in those days. Plus my family was granted the rights to what I should <laughs> like to call a, a Delta entertainment related enterprises in the new world in perpetuity. And about that covered a lot, and in some cases uncovered a lot, the capiche. So, what are you doing these days? Well, supposedly I died on May 20th, 1506. But hey, no one really knows where my tomb is now, do they? As some I believe I'm in Spania, others they believe it's the Dominican Republic, and others still think it's in Cuba. Why, some even say I'm in the end zone or some football field. What do they know? So, where are you? Right now, I'm on a private little island in the Caribbean that belongs to the Colombo family. Nice little retreat that's just a short hop to some of the family's interest, as well as our Cayman accounts. But I do get around, especially like heading out to New York City, where they celebrate Columbus Day, and visiting some of the Italian neighborhoods in the Northeast for some good close-to-home cooking. Ah, I can just smell the garlic sauce now simmering and some of the meals. <laughs> well, they are to die for if you know what I mean. Um, well, uh, we've just about run out of time for today and I'd like to thank you, Chris, for sharing with us your tales of discovery and exploration. Uh, I know that I learned things I didn't know about other trips you took to the New World and, well, your family's business. Uh, as is customary, any Parting comments for our viewers? Yes, the first off, if you do something big, if you do something people ought to know about, hire yourself a good PR person. I didn't, and that was a mistake because Amerigo Vespucci, that weasel, did, and he got the Americas named after him. What a lot of crap. Secondly, if a member of the Colombo family asks you to do them a favor, don't be so quick to say no. Thirdly, and most importantly, follow your dreams. I had a dream that I could reach Asia by sailing westward. And while that notion was rejected by many so-called smart people in that day, I prevailed by being persistent. And though I didn't really find what I was seeking, I ended up finding something even bigger and that changed the course of history. Words of wisdom from Christopher Columbus, who in my mind will always be Admiral of the Open Sea. So until our next Chatting with History, this is Dan Gersten reminding you to follow your dreams and leave the violin case at home. Talk to me. Talk